Hi, I'm Max. Welcome to MentorClick's Mentoring Soundbites, where we answer some of the most common and important questions professionals just like you ask about starting, managing, and growing their mentoring programs. In this video, an HR leader from a multinational financial services company provides detailed advice on how to improve the new hire onboarding experience with mentoring programs. We hope you find this video helpful. Be sure to like and subscribe for more mentoring best practices like these. The program itself was completely reimagined and our leaders, our executives were at the helm of that whole transition of the program. So this became something that really was part of that transition to say, how can we, how can we pair these people up? So they really, they're not just learning to be the entry level people that they are, but they're looking to see, this is what I'm going for. And so they, they were on board at the beginning. We have a, um, a program management team um, of people in the business who manage the entire program. And they, are very, very supportive of the mentoring piece of it and very interested in it. And, and they are the ones who actually develop a lot of the activities that our mentors and mentees do together. So it is, um, it's a true partnership. You know, we, we support what their vision is. Mentors always wanna know, what should I do? You know, it's like, I'm, I'm happy to be a mentor, but like, what do I talk about? What do I do? So, um, so we wanted to make it um, as structured as they need it. And so what our program team did was they identified um, for each of these eight competencies um, an activity for people to do that they can choose to do, or if there's something else, you know, that the mentor wants to do, that, that's fine. But so in each quarter, they put out this activity. So our mentors, they, they meet monthly, but it's one competency per quarter. And so, for example, for um, uh, business writing or written communication is one of the competencies. And so the activity is, it's twofold. We have an online program that is maybe 20 minutes that they um, that they go through, the mentors and the mentees, so they, they can kind of discuss that. And then the um, they each, write um, an email. So they have a certain kind of email that they need to write. Maybe it is um, focusing on um, informing their manager of a change they want to make to to a deal or something like that. And then they share that email and they talk about what's good about it, what can be changed. So they're really trying to get at activities that focus on what they'll be doing in the real world and, um, and that they can learn from each other. And, um, and that we're finding a lot of success with that. So they have something they can use. And then we have those mentors and mentees who have other things that would uh, be meaningful to them outside of this. And they can do that as well. What we're doing is we're encouraging all of our colleagues to spend one hour a month on some kind of professional development. And as we tell our mentors and mentees, definitely if you're a mentee, this hour is for your development. And if you're a mentor, this hour is for your development because you'll get things from out of doing this um, that you wouldn't be able to get from reading a book or watching a video. We didn't have any any pushback. We didn't have anybody saying, my mentor won't meet with me. I can't, you know, I can't get them on the calendar. None of that because they're constantly getting recognition um, from their leaders about um, what a good thing they're doing. The big picture is um, opportunity. Opportunity for everybody to have a mentoring relationship if they choose to have one. So, you know, in addition to the onboarding programs that we have, we are um, restarting our leadership development program, which had to um, be paused yeah, during uh, during COVID, and that has a mentoring component to it. Some of our employee resource groups want a mentoring program, so we're we're working with them to do that. But then we have this overall mentoring program where we are now uh, recruiting mentors for this. Last I looked, we had about 325 who had signed up. And um, it's really to give everybody an opportunity to have a mentoring relationship if they want one. 
and obviously to give the mentors the ability to um, to participate and to learn and to to gain new skills themselves and and we're really excited because we're using that kind of match.com approach on um, on the site and we are um, getting very close to, um, to opening it up to to our mentees we're just continuing to um, to get the mentors ready we'll be doing orientation sessions with the mentors letting them know exactly what to expect because now we have this line of sight into what the um, what the experience is really like for somebody and you know the emails that they get and the activities that they do and um, and this one we are broadening the competencies we have about 30 um, behavioral competencies that, that people can choose from and we will be putting in um, activities for many many of those competencies and um, you know kind of pre pre-made um, development activities that they can use and we're just really really excited about it the other thing that um, we're kind of playing around with is almost a skills mentoring um, program where there's people who want to learn more about PowerPoint, people who want to learn more about Excel, um, people who want, you know, and, and then we have those people who are really good, who, who like to help people. And so, you know, going forward, I can see some kind of a, a skills mentoring program like that, where it's almost like a, a coach on demand. So um, I, you know, the, the, the platform is so flexible and user-friendly that um, I can see us using it for a lot of different things. Know what your objective is. You know, what do you want people to get out of it? So, um, you know, in an onboarding one, it, it, you know, are you looking to help people feel like part of the team? Are you helping them to see the future of their role? Are you helping them to learn something specific about their role? So when, you know, that, that kind of line of sight. In our corporate program, it's more about helping people feel like they have, um, they have opportunities to learn more about uh, things that are available to them in the company you know, that, that type of thing. So it's not, we're not looking at mentors to, you know, help them with their presentation skills or something like that. It's more of um, giving them some advice to navigate their career. In our um, women's forum program, it will be a lot on, um, on women's issues and work-life balance and, and those types of things. So they've identified those particular competences, competencies that they want to work for. So people know going in, this is what it's all about. What hurdles has your organization faced with employee onboarding? Let us know in the comments below. Studies show a large percentage of new employee turnover is due to poorly structured onboarding programs. Getting the onboarding program right will result in higher engagement levels, lower turnover, and massive retention cost savings. 84% of Fortune 500 companies now use mentoring. And guess what? Many use mentoring from day one as a critical onboarding strategy. For even more mentoring tips, check out the links below the video or visit us at mentorclick.com. And don't forget to like and subscribe to get updated on mentoring best practices like these.